Hello again, and welcome to Literacy Volunteers New Tutor Trainings. This presentation will focus on how we learn. In this lesson, you will learn about learning styles, gain an understanding of how we learn, understand the role of multiple intelligences in learning, discover which multiple intelligence you possess, and under, gain an understanding of how learning disabilities affect the learning process. So what is a learning style? The term learning style speaks to the understanding that every student learns differently. Technically, a student's learning style refers to the preferential way in which the student absorbs, processes, comprehends, and retains information. The way we take in information is through our five senses. So we taste, smell, hear, see, and touch. And this affects us in a learning environment because some of us prefer to take in information through one of those senses over some of the others. And if information is not presented in a way that's easy for us to process and retain, we'll struggle to learn. And as teachers, as tutors, we oftentimes go into our tutor relationships or a, as a classroom instructor even, leaning on our own uh, preferred way of taking in information. And this is a, a natural human uh, error, I think. We want to... Um, uh, sympathize with our student and in doing so we link what worked for us with what will possibly work with him, with them or work for them but we neglect the fact that there are other ways of taking in information and our student may prefer those other ways or may lean upon those other ways um, a bit more than they do for instance taking in information visually and it's important for us to recognize that and observe which mode of presentation is going to be most conducive to learning for your student. So in order for you to distinguish what your learning style is from what your student's learning style is, you've got to find out what yours is to begin with. There's a link here on this slide to a, a learning styles inventory. Take a moment and go through it. It's not terribly long. Um, and as you do so, just please understand that this is not a comprehensive assessment. The results are not clinical or diagnostic. This inventory will, will provide you with an impression of your learning preferences, and you should just have fun. There's another facet of learning that we should address, and it's the idea of multiple intelligences. Typically speaking, when we're talking about intelligence, especially in the U.S. or in the West of the world, we, are, we, we, we tend to be biased towards people who have linguistic intelligence and are, or are uh, logical and mathematical. Those two types of intelligences um, tend to... Um, be most prestigious. People who possess them and utilize them um, get paid higher salaries, are generally speaking more prominent. But in 1983, Dr. Howard Gardner um, sat down and really thought about this idea of intelligence. And he suggests that traditional notions of intelligence based on IQ testing are far too limited. Instead, Dr. Gardner possess, uh, proposes nine different intelligences to account for a broader range of human potential in children and adults. And so we've talked about linguistic um, a little bit, um, but that's the word smart. People who possess a turn of phrase likely learn auditorially or visually. These are the folks who can stand up in front of a crowd and deliver a speech. Um, they're the people who have pretty uh, impressive command of the language. Uh, next on the list are mathematical, the logical mathematical intelligence. And those are our reasoners and our uh, logicians, our mathematicians, people who possess 
a great deal of uh, skill when it comes to analyzing something. And tests like the SAT and the ACT really cater to this kind of intelligence, but they don't necessarily cater to the rest of the people on the list who, or the rest of the kinds of intelligences on the list, for instance, spatial intelligence. Those are our artists and people who are able to render things in uh, multidimensionally. Um, bodily kinesthetic intelligence. These are our people who are really, who understand the body and understand um, how it works and how to get the most out of it. So if you are looking for a personal trainer, you want someone who's bodily kinesthetic. You don't necessarily want someone who has spatial intelligence. Um, musical intelligence. These are our musicians and people who are able to render words into music um, or think of compositions. It's a kind of intelligence that boggles my mind. I have no idea where that kind of intelligence springs from. Um, interpersonal intelligence. These are our people smart folks. Um, it's very likely that emotional intelligence can be collapsed into this uh, category of intelligence. These are the folks who are, you could call them extra but they're very good at making connections and making connections not only for themselves but between organizations and other people. The interpersonal um, intelligence, these are the folks you might think of as our introverts, but they're the folks who take in information from their environment and internally are able to distill it down to um, something that is generally of higher quality than it would be if you're just talking out loud, bandying about ideas. So the kind of work that they produce is generally um, uh, a, a step above what it might be for other f folks on the on the list or other kinds of intelligence on the list. Our naturalists are the people who are able to look in our uh, natural environment and understand what's going on here. These folks also might be scientists. It's very possible that they have a lot of um, logical mathematical in, uh, intelligence. And then the, uh, the last and the newest addition to Dr. Gartner's multiple intelligences is the existential, and that's the questioning smart. These are folks who dive deep into the unanswered questions of, of our society and the world and history and try to come out of it with um, a sense of an answer. Um, and uh, these are our philosophers. Oftentimes they're our lawyers um, and other folks. So on the next slide, um, we're going to talk about and try to uh, your multiple intelligence. And uh, there's a link to help you um, well, you'll, there's a link where you'll take an assessment where you can determine what your multiple intelligence is. Before we jump into the assessment, however, here is an infographic um, of those multiple intelligences. I wanted to make sure we presented this to you so that you could, um, for those of you who are visual learners, can get a sense of what those look like. Um, so if you'd like to know more about Dr. Gardner's theory of multiple intelligence, you can check this out at uh, the link on this slide. Here is the link where you can take the multiple intelligence assessment. Remember to hold on to your answers because this is assignment three, so you'll be sending um, your results to Rachel. You can copy and paste, if you'd like, from the online assessment, or you can simply send her a brief bullet point of what your results were. As we're talking about how we learn, it's important to also talk about challenges that may occur as we're trying to learn and specifically processing challenges. For adults, there is no special education. 
And in fact, in the countries where many of our students come from, the concept of a learning disability is completely foreign, and it may be inappropriate to speak about them in relation to our students. However, many students do demonstrate challenges processing information, and you can understand what processing issues look like by viewing the Fat City training video. You should note, though, that this video was made in the 80s, and while the video quality and the hairstyles are dated, the principles and the strategies remain relevant today. Take a look at these four sections of that Fat City Learning Disabilities Workshop video. Um, it's located on YouTube. Here's the link for it on this slide. I have combed through it and um, selected these four, four parts, but feel free to watch the whole thing if you'd like. I think it's just over an hour long. Um, when you've done, uh, your assignment for, uh, for this uh, video is to answer um, the following question, which is, what struck you as surprising? And also, while this video focuses on children, how might the same things be true for adults? So keep those questions in mind as you uh, go through these four sections. Right, so here are your assignments for this presentation. Please uh, do the learning styles inventory, which I neglected to put on this slide. Also complete the multiple intelligence assessment and answer those two questions um, with regards to the Fat City videos. Um, as always, put your you can um, put your responses um, or your assignments on a Word document and send them to Rachel as an attachment or you can send them in the body of an email.